Intelligent investing is a way to invest in the market without the risk of losing everything. Because intelligent investing takes a longer term and more risk averse approach, and it works. Many have used Benjamin Graham's approach and made fortunes in the decades since The Intelligent Investor was published. Perhaps the most famous among them is Warren Buffett. Today, Graham is known as the greatest investment advisor of the 20th century. He has inspired people worldwide with his philosophy of value investing, which has made this book the stock market bible since its publication in 1949. If you watch this summary until the end, you will also learn how you can become an intelligent investor. First of all, through stock market investing, there is a lot of money to be made, but also a lot to lose. We have all heard stories of investors like Warren Buffett who earned vast amounts of money by investing in the right companies. But we always have to keep in mind that there are even more stories of misfortune out there which we've never heard of, and sometimes people end up losing it all. So the question is, does investment really work and is it worth the risk? The answer is it can be, as long as we follow the strategy of intelligent investing. This is very different from speculating. Speculating means focusing on short-term gains made possible by market fluctuations, but it has nothing to do with long-term investing. Speculating is very risky simply because of the fact that nobody can predict what happens in the future. Intelligent investing can be broken down into the following three principles. Number one, intelligent investors analyze the long-term development and business principles of the companies in which they're considering to invest before buying any stock. A stock's long-term value depends directly on how well the company behind it performs. So, we have to examine the company's financial structure, the quality of its management, and also its distribution of profits to investors. For instance, whether it pays steady dividends or not. Let's always look at the big picture by examining the company's financial history instead of falling into the trap of only looking at short-term earnings. These steps will give us a better idea of how well a company performs, independent of its value on the market. Companies that currently aren't popular but show promising records like consistent profits could have low share prices and are likely to be undervalued, and thus, these companies would make a prudent investment. Principle number two. Intelligent investors protect themselves against serious losses by diversifying their investments. No matter how promising a company appears, let's never put all our money on one stock. By diversifying, we make sure that we won't lose everything at once. Example, imagine how you would feel if the promising company you've invested all your money into shows up in the news for a tax fraud scandal. Your investment would lose its value immediately and all the time and money you invested would be lost forever. And then there's principle three. Intelligent investors understand that they won't pull extraordinary profits, but safe and steady revenues. The life of an intelligent investor isn't very exciting, but that's not what investors investing's about. It's about the profit we make in the long run. For indeed, the investor's chief problem, and even his worst enemy, is likely to be himself. That means the target for the intelligent investor shouldn't be to outperform the professional stockbrokers on Wall Street. We shouldn't be aiming for fast money anyway, and why should we do better than those who trade for a living? Before we begin to invest, the first thing we have to do is look at the history of the stock market. Doing this will reveal that the stock market has always been defined by regular ups and downs. Most of the time, these fluctuations can't be foreseen. The only indisputable truth that the past teaches us is that the future will always surprise us. Always. So the unpredictability of the market means that we as investors need to be prepared, financially and psychologically. Economic crises like the stock market crash in 1929 or the financial crisis starting in 2007 are a fact of life and happen from time to time. That's why we need to ensure that we can take a big hit and still stay in the market. Therefore, we should not only have a diverse stock portfolio, but we should also be mentally and psychologically prepared for crises and never sell everything at the first sign of danger. We could imagine the entire stock market as being a person, let's call 
call him Mr. Market. Mr. Market is very moody, unpredictable, and on top of that, not very clever. He is easily influenced, and this causes him to have major mood swings. But the intelligent investor needs to be a realist and should ignore the mood swings of Mr. Market. Graham advises us to invest only if we would feel comfortable to hold a stock in the future without looking at the fluctuating prices that Mr. Market presents us with. We must consider that nowadays this requires a lot more discipline than at the time when Graham wrote this book. Because back then people were less bombarded with news, stock market updates, forecasts, and so on than we are today. What we have to do is remember that even after the most devastating crashes, the market will always recover sometimes slower, sometimes faster. And looking at the history of the market will give us a better idea of its stability. The second thing we should do once we've determined that the market is stable is focus on the history of the companies in which we would like to invest. Therefore, we could take a look at the correlation between a company's stock price and its earnings and dividends over the past 10 years. Now, as we're on the path of investing, it's important to pick a strategy that best matches us as individuals. According to Graham, there are two types of investors, the defensive or passive one, and the enterprising or active one. We need to decide which type of investor we want to be. Most people are better suited for the defensive strategy as the time they are willing to dedicate for investing is limited. The defensive investor hates risks. His or her main focus is safety. This safety can only be achieved if he or she diversifies the portfolio. First, Graham suggests to invest in both high-grade bonds, like AAA government debt securities, as well as common stocks. Ideally, we should make around a 50-50 split between the two. Because stocks and markets have different degrees of safety and profitability, bonds are more secure but produce less profit, while stocks are less secure but can lead to greater rewards. So a 50-50 split accounts for both tendencies. Second, the author suggests to diversify our common stock portfolio too. We should try to invest in at least 10 different companies to reduce the risk. Thereby, we should make sure that we are not overexposed to a single industry. Also, the company should be large and well-known with a long history of success. When deciding on common stocks, Graham suggests to make use of the simplicity of choice. So let's not reinvent the wheel. We could look at the portfolios of well-established investment funds and simply align our portfolio with theirs. This doesn't mean we should follow the crowd and buy the stocks that are fashionable. Let's rather look for investment funds with a long history of success and copy them. An alternative today would be investing in an index fund. And then once we've chosen the companies we want to invest in, most of our work is complete. All we have to do is determine how much money we want to regularly invest and check our portfolio from time to time. During this time, it's best to use a process called formula investing, in which we act strictly according to a predefined formula. This formula should determine how much money we will invest and how often. The approach is also known as dollar cost averaging and it should fit with our savings plan to ensure that we can keep up our formula investing for a long time. Thereby, we automatically invest the same amount of money every month and set our investments on autopilot. Of course, before that, we have to commit ourselves to a certain amount of money which we want to invest every month. The advantage is that this doesn't require any further effort and that way we certainly won't gamble. Nevertheless, defensive investors should check from time to time if their investment portfolios are still running well. For this, a good rule is to readjust the portfolio's division of bonds and common stocks every six months. Thereby, let's ask ourselves if our stocks are still profitable and if the ratio is about the same as when we had initially invested 50% in bonds and 50% in stocks. Now we know all we need to start our career as a defensive investor. A defensive investor runs and wins the race by sitting still. But what about the other type of investor, the enterprising investor? First of all, enterprising investors start similarly to defensive investors. So active investors need to employ many of the same strategies as passive investors do. And as it's not hard for a passive investor to take home the average return of the market, for many people it seems easy to beat the market. They think with devoting a little more time than the average investor does, making bigger profits shouldn't be difficult. Well, 
Unfortunately, that's not true, and many active investors earn less than they would with simply investing in index funds. So if we decide to become enterprising investors, it's very important to follow Benjamin Graham's advice to make sure we're not risking too much. Just like a defensive investor, we have to divide our funds between bonds and common stocks. But contrary to passive investors, who should opt for a 50-50 split between them, the active investor will invest more in common stocks as they are more profitable, but also riskier. In addition, enterprising investors can also experiment with other kinds of stocks that have higher risk and higher reward. So if they read about a company that might be the next Amazon, Google, or Netflix, it represents an amazing opportunity to them. Because as an enterprising investor, they can take a risk on this company, but only with a limited amount of money. No matter how exciting or promising an investment opportunity may seem, as an enterprising investor, we should limit these stocks to a maximum of 10% of our overall portfolio. For everyone who wants to dig deeper into this topic, Graham devises a formula that can give some heads up regarding the value of growth stocks. Value equals current earnings per share times 8.5 plus 2 times expected annual growth rate. The growth rate should be equal to the expected yearly growth rate for the next 7 to 10 years. But even if the result shows a really high value of a stock and a possible investment opportunity seems perfect, let's always remember, intelligent investors are not without fault and sometimes Mr. Market goes too crazy for any rational person to predict. So to protect our money in case of economic downturn or poor investment, we have to place limits. And just like defensive investors, as enterprising investors, we shouldn't forget to continuously research and monitor their portfolios to maintain an incoming profit flow. Let's check our portfolio regularly and examine the companies we're invested in. How is the financial situation? And is the management still doing a good job? Sometimes it's better to sell before a stock crashes because it was growing without any relation to its true value. Benjamin Graham suggests to sell in high markets and buy in low markets, but there's one approach we should avoid, trading in the market. This is typical for investors because they fear that going against the flow will result in financial losses. But an intelligent investor knows that this approach is too risky and trusting Mr. Market is dangerous. That's why they avoid this scenario. And who knows, maybe one day, as enterprising investors, we are able to find a real bargain. But only if we start smart. No matter if we want to become an active or passive investor when it comes to stocks, let's always walk the path of the intelligent investor. Do you think following Benjamin Graham's guidelines can turn your investments into steady profits? Comment below and be sure to subscribe.